Tina Turner's house in the south of France. Born in Brownsville, Tennessee, Turner chose to spend her final years in Switzerland, where she had become a naturalized citizen in 2013. Alongside her husband, Erwin Bach, a German-born music executive and producer, Turner embraced a quieter and more serene lifestyle in Europe. Contrary to her diva image, she reveled in the simplicity of life. In a 1,999 interview with the D.A. Turner, shared her love for nature and solitude, expressing how they nurtured her soul. She preferred a peaceful existence, enjoying moments like reading a book on her terrace while her boyfriend prepared dinner. Away from the stage, Turner found solace and contentment amidst the serene landscapes of her getaway villa on the French Riviera. News of Turner's passing was reported by Variety, confirming that she died at her residence in Kuznacht, Switzerland, where she resided with Bach. Switzerland held a special place in her heart, as she owned multiple properties in the country, including the impressive 5.5-acre Staffa property, which she acquired for $76 million in 2022. Turner's enduring legacy extends beyond her music, as she is survived by Bach and her two sons, a testament to the love and joy she shared with her family. As the world reflects on Tina Turner's life and immense contributions to music, it is evident that her influence surpassed boundaries and touched the hearts of millions. Her powerful voice, electrifying performances, and relentless spirit will continue to inspire and resonate with generations to come, ensuring that her legacy remains alive in the annals of music history. On the eve of the final solar eclipse of the millennium, the atmosphere in France, like much of Europe, is filled with a sense of anticipation and excitement. People anxiously monitor the weather channel, while eccentric doomsayers predict an impending apocalypse. The hunt for pharmacies, with remaining stocks of protective glasses, has become frantic. In the scenic hills above the Riviera, the narrow roads leading to magnificent villas are congested with catering vans and limousines, as last-minute guests arrive from nice airport for the extravagant parties. Amongst these lavish abodes, perched majestically atop a hill, Tina Turner exudes radiance in her flowing white muslin attire. As she sets up her telescope on the terrace, she reflects on both celestial and personal eclipses. Turner, seasoned in her understanding of eclipses, knows that the sun always re-emerges, bringing light and hope once more. Having recently driven south from her primary residence in Switzerland, Turner awaits the arrival of friends from London, Paris, and New York. Although the timing seems somewhat inconvenient for a leisurely house tour, not only due to the impending eclipse, but also because she is preparing to launch her highly anticipated album, Tina 24-7. With a discerning ear, she listens to the album's soundtrack, preparing herself for the demanding schedule of an upcoming world tour. Once the celestial spectacle concludes, the Queen of Rock will step into the limelight herself, striking poses for photographers and rehearsing for her new music video. Yet, Turner, a true grande dame, gracefully embodies both her innate southern warmth and the refined European palace she has acquired over the years. Despite the presence of her entourage and the imminent invasion of a film crew, she remains relaxed and affable. As an expert in her craft, Tina Turner's star power shines brightly, transcending both time and continents. Her remarkable journey, marked by personal and professional highs and lows, has shaped her into an enduring icon. As the world eagerly awaits her new musical offerings, Turner's poised and gracious demeanor exemplifies the essence of a true diva, one who effortlessly commands respect and admiration. Turner at 60 possesses a charisma that few women, regardless of age, can match. What sets her apart is the stark contrast between the allure of her private persona and the glamour associated with being a diva. Surprisingly, her closet lacks sequins and ostentatious outfits. I'm just not that person, she chuckles, as she swings open the doors to a dressing room adorned with delicate white blossoms, an antique court fan, and a soothing palette of cream shade. I prefer simplicity. My life may be filled with noise through my work, but it finds solace in tranquility. Nature and solitude nurture me. My idea of a vacation is curling up with a book on the terrace while my boyfriend prepares dinner. 
Turner's culinary preferences lean towards rustic cuisine, but her taste in literature, much like her decor, showcases her refinement. She admires the classical beauty of Greece and Rome, collects Chinese art, and delves into the study of Buddhism, although she doesn't openly display her spiritual practice. Her electric stage presence acts as a conduit for her grounded soul. Twelve years ago, the singer relocated to Europe alongside her partner, Erwin Bach, a marketing director at EMI Records. Her career, which experienced a slump after her divorce from Ike Turner, underwent a revival abroad before making a triumphant return to the United States. Many great expatriate artists, especially musicians, have followed a similar trajectory. While she deeply appreciates the popularity of her music and the success of her gripping autobiography, Itina, later adapted into the film What's Love Got to Do With It, Turner remains profoundly grateful to her fans from across the globe. During her time living in Germany with Bach, Turner's manager introduced her to the south of France, and she eventually rented a charming little pink house near the summit where she currently resides. However, she never succumbed to the glittering and somewhat decadent social scene of the coastal resorts. The cap is like Beverly Hills, she asserts, and that's precisely what I wanted to escape. When we discovered that this property was for sale, we were told that angels live here, and we laughed. But, in truth, it is a profoundly spiritual place, nestled between two mountains, enveloped by lush woods, teeming with wildlife. And that's crucial for me. I grew up in the countryside, raised by a family devoted to Bible readings and church music. My Native American heritage from my mother's side has given me a different kind of religious legacy. Up here, the wind and clouds gracefully meander through the house, and the sky paints mesmerizing pictures. I could watch them for hours on end. Turner's villa, much like the artist herself, has undergone several transformations before assuming its present character, where grandeur and informality find a delicate balance. According to Turner, a great interior must come together. Whenever she encounters something she loves, a furniture suite, a piece of artwork, she never hesitates or measures. She simply acquires it, confident that she'll find the perfect place for it eventually. Her tastes are bold, and her storerooms are vast. Transforming her surroundings has always been her response to loss and upheaval, allowing her to settle, gather her belongings, and create a private universe. As a young girl, when her parents separated, she moved in with relatives, claiming a small back room as her own. She brought along a bedspread from home and a few cherished items. Despite the room's freezing winters and scorching summers, not to mention its diminutive size, she turned it into a sanctuary. This approach continued throughout her touring years, rearranging hotel furniture, covering up unsightly paintings. However, perfecting a home of this scale was proving to be a lengthy process. She eventually realized she needed professional assistance, specifically the right professionals for her. Following a vacation in Aspen, Colorado, where she enjoyed the luxurious neo-baroque manner of her friends Jim and Betsy Fifield, as featured in Architectural Digest, March 1999, Turner reached out to their talented designers Stephen Sills and James Hunnefort. From their initial meeting, she instinctively felt that she could collaborate with them, and they, being avid fans of her music, immediately adored her. I allowed them to experiment, Turner reveals with a smile. They never pushed me. I would say to them, yes, let's do it. No, thanks, I've tried that before. We worked based on feelings. It's like mixing a CD. Fondly referring to them as the boys, Sills, and Huniford have become renowned interior designers over the past decade esteemed for their patrician aesthetics that seamlessly blend antiques of distinguished provenance with pieces from eminent modernist and art deco designers, all while displaying an unwavering sense of history. Though their inclination leans toward classicism, they every commission is different because our role is to interpret how a client wants to live. Sills asserts, designing involves culture, intuition, craftsmanship, and a concept of transparency, which I can best liken to the art of literary translation. Your sensibility functions as a prism. When working with Tina, a natural-born decorator, 
Our task was truly about helping her find her own voice and express her personal style rather than imposing ours. We visited museums together, shopped on the Quai Voltaire in Paris, exchanged books and ideas, some of which Tina embraced, while others she dismissed, depending on what suited her best. We also assisted in curating her collections. However, Tina was the mastermind behind this house. It is her very own creation. During the early stages of their creative collaboration, the designers accompanied Turner on a visit to Villa Carrillo's in Beaulieu, an exquisite fin de siècle residence constructed by the erudite French Hellenist Theodore Reinage. This villa was meticulously modeled after the dwellings of ancient Delos, boasting impeccably faithful reproductions of attic furnishings, art, mosaics, frescoes, and fixtures. Turner recalls the visit as a profound inspiration, and the architectural elements of her own villa pay tribute to the classical style. The terraced amphitheater, stenciled plasterwork, harmonious arrangement of Greek and Roman pottery and sculpture, the columned pool loggia, and sheltered terraces adorned with canvas shades featuring a Greek key motif, as well as the bronze and alabaster chandeliers adapted from the Villa Kyrillos. By Sills and Huniford, all reflect Turner's admiration for the classical aesthetic. Huniford also encouraged Turner to embrace the neoclassical minimalism achieved by Reinich and his Italian architect in Beaulieu when designing her interiors. However, Turner had reservations and found the reproduced furnishings from villas in Herculaneum in Egypt, among other places, to be too diminutive in scale for her taste. During a shopping excursion in Paris with her trusted design collaborators, she was captivated by a lavish and extravagantly expensive suite of gilt Louis Philippe Fauchels and canopies, consisting of 22 pieces, despite Sill's plea to test them before making the purchase. She felt no intimidation by the grandeur associated with palace furniture. Instead, she recognized its beauty, comfort, and its ability to establish the desired ambience throughout her entire home. Additionally, Turner's vision included commissioning a dining table crafted from ebony with bronze inlays from the esteemed French sculptor and furniture designer, André de Bruyne, who had also collaborated with the fields. To accentuate her 19th-century regal seating, she opted for Art Deco side tables made of bronze and marble. A secluded alcove adjacent to the living room was transformed into a cozy library at Turner's request, where she could indulge in her passion for writing and studying. This intimate space featured an antique card table surrounded by her collection of leather-bound volumes on art, religion, and ancient history. Naturally, as befitting a renowned star of Turner's stature, a luxurious basement spa, complete with screening and trophy rooms, was also incorporated into the design, as she preferred not to venture far from home, except for occasional visits to a local restaurant down the hill. The designers adorned the house with Turner's cherished collections of black and white photographs and stringed instruments, showcasing her personal interests throughout the residence. Perched majestically on the cliffs of the Riviera, the multi-level villa, envisioned by architect Bruno Gastini, seamlessly integrates the allure of outdoor living with every significant room. Each space graciously unfolds onto a patio or balcony, offering opportunities for al fresco dining, sun-soaked relaxation, and leisurely lounging, a true embodiment of the clifftop living experience. Nestled beside the main suite, adorned in an Egyptian-inspired palette of flax and coal, lies a secluded terrace commanding an unending vista of the sea. Turner affectionately refers to this serene haven as her refuge, a cherished retreat within her abode. With an air of contentment, she nestles into a rattan divan and affectionately dubs it Cleopatra's barge. In her iconic voice, blending determination with velvety grace, Turner's words illuminate the intrinsic connection between opulence and humility, sensuousness, and spirituality. The resonance between the diva and the queen of the Nile, the high priestess of Isis, becomes captivatingly apparent. Much like Cleopatra, Turner embodies timeless beauty, living at the threshold of a new millennium. She ardently believes in the power of dreams and dedicates herself to the study of ancient cultures. Her admirers revere her as a goddess, while she navigates the tumultuous waters of love, 
exile, violence, and celebrity, emerging resilient after each upheaval to reclaim her indomitable spirit. The price tag of a daybed, the complexities of a cause, or the intricacies of a love affair hold little intimidation for her. In the face of adversity and the shadows that sometimes dim the limelight, Turner remains steadfast in her faith, unwavering and resolute.